Hello, Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I am here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right? Yeah. It's still raining. <laughs> it's always raining. It's man. been a week. It's still raining. It doesn't stop. It's just yeah. that's, that's how it is now. We live in the, like the marshland or something, the rainforest. Yeah, <laughs> we can go fishing in my backyard when this is done again. Yeah, no joke, man. Yeah. <laughs> just look out for the piranhas. Yeah. This is apparently well, like I, I get I'm more worried about the mosquitoes, honestly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's that's fair. Yeah. They're as big as the piranhas. Exactly. No joke. <laughs> and draw more blood. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't I don't know why, but piranhas like popped up in my I think my Netflix feed. Oh yeah. Yesterday it was like piranhas, you know, and I I kind of vaguely remember this film, but um, I haven't seen it. Well, I never saw it. Oh, I you just, never saw it. You I, just remember when it came yeah. out or whatever. Yeah. Um. It's got, uh, oh gosh, now I can't think of her name. Um, Elizabeth Shue. Oh, yeah. Like, that's a real actor. Like, yeah. what, is, what is she doing in this film? <laughs> um, it's got the uh, the guy um, from Parks and Rec the, um, that was the secondary guy. What, Adam Scott? Is that the name of the actor? Uh, no, I wouldn't again. know the actor name. Um, if anyway. you give me his character, I might remember. Yeah, okay, so the two guys came in um, to help, like, oh, run the, the yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Um, and he was the secondary guy. He's like the the one that married um, Leslie Knope. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I can't. I can't even remember his actor <laughs> or the screen name. But yeah, well, I, know, I can't but remember I, that. But I'm pretty sure Adam Scott is the is the actor. Yeah. Um, and it's got uh, what's his name that was uh, Doc. Um, in uh, Back to the Future. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Wow. So that's dude. That's a pretty good cast. Yeah. Man. Like <laughs> as I was looking at the cast, I was like, maybe worth I watching. should see this. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. um, but I haven't yet. Eh, maybe worth. I it, got man. I got too long a list. I watched uh, um, a movie called Martyrs. Oh yeah. Yesterday. All right. So I saw the American version yeah. uh, a year or so ago. And I recently signed up for Tubi. Well, I didn't sign up actually. It's just free. So. Yeah. Um, and it, you had to deal with commercials and that sucks. I hadn't dealt with commercials in a really long time. Yeah. Uh, but they got a real significant horror selection and I like horror films. Oh, gotcha. So, um, I saw that they had the French movie martyrs that the American movie was based on, which yeah. I hadn't seen. And, uh, and I watched it and it was like the American one was disturbing the French yeah. one was way more disturbing, really? or at least as I remember. Yeah. Um. I was, I was kind of like I, I thought at the beginning I was like, oh, this is the exact same film. But as it progressed, it was like, wow, this is somehow darker. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and interesting. Then I wasn't sure that I really was glad that I watched it honestly. <laughs> um, uh. But. Yeah, uh, I so I, I'm I see that I have a note on the top. There's some shadow moving. There's a ghost uh, in the corner. Okay. Um, <laughs> I see a note a note at the top of my notebook here that is clearly a reference to some podcast in time that I was probably going to try and pull a clip from, but I don't know what podcast it would be. Uh oh. <laughs> And you obviously don't know what clip it is. Well, I didn't pull the clip, obviously. <laughs> I yeah. don't know. I, I'm just realizing now. Like, I wonder if that was relevant for this podcast. <laughs> Maybe. Oh, well. Um, we got we got a bunch to talk about. Yeah. I, there's, a, like, a bunch of little things. And I thought, actually, that I would start by um, with, a, like, an addendum to the last show. All right. All right. So we were talking about, you know, reasons that, people don't have a respect for the market yeah. Um, generally. Uh, and I, I thought, like, we didn't actually start with the most basic thing, yeah. which is um, people don't have an appreciation for scarcity. Yeah. The, and, I, you know, I always think of the, um, uh, the Thomas Sowell um, quote where he says something like... Um, that the first rule of economics is scarcity. There's never enough of something to satisfy all the demand for it. Yeah. Um, the first rule of politics is to forget the first rule of economics. Yeah, no, that's a lot of truth in that. And I was thinking that that might be the first rule of education now, too. 
um, yeah. is to forget about scarcity. But yeah. uh, I mean, it goes along the lines with what we were talking about. If everybody, you know, like, um, like if everybody had Andrew Yang's uh, universal income, yeah, thing, yeah. Um, and they got to just choose to do whatever it is that they wanted to do because all their other needs were taken care of. And so they would just do the jobs that they wanted to ju- to do. And we were like, well, where would all those other needs come from then? Yeah. Like where would the products that fill all those other needs come from? Yeah. I mean, and, and we used and uh, services. I mean, that's, yeah. Uh, uh, well, we were using garbage, uh, like waste management as the example. Then I was yeah. thinking like even farming, like yeah. how would we feed everybody? Like, there are not very many farmers. It's been highly industrialized. There's been a whole lot of developments to make farming easier, but it, it, it it's but it's still not hard. actually making farming easier. It just takes fewer people to do it. Well, that's what I was fixing to say is that it's not the for the people that do the work. It's still hard work. Yeah, it's just it doesn't take as many people to do the hard work. Mm-hmm. So, so um, there's just I, I think that that people don't. Maybe it's just not intuitive to understand because it's so easy to just like go to the grocery store and pick out everything that you want. Yeah. <laughs> right. But, but the truth is that the, all these products out here, they get distributed by the market, yeah. um, by price fluctuations and, and demand in various areas. And, and like, that's how, that's how 8 billion people across this globe coordinate yeah. their activities so that everybody gets, Something. Yeah. Right. Like that, that's how it's done. There's, there's no other method of doing that. And, and maybe what goes along with that is this idea that there is somebody that could plan it better. No. And there's There's, just too much data. No. Well, there's no way. Even if you had like a computer program to try Mm -hmm. to process all the data, it would, it could never get it right. Yeah. Like not in the way that the market can get it right. And not that the market gets it perfect every time. No, it doesn't. Because the market does. But it's self correcting. Well, exactly. And the market does eventually get it, but it doesn't always happen as quickly as you would like. Right. But it, but the market does figure it out. Yeah. Well, and, and no, um, no leader, no computer program, none of that can ever perfectly predict what people will want. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the job of the entrepreneur is to guess right. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the reason they're taking on the risk, mm-hmm. you know. And, and then there's also, I think, uh, people forget about all the businesses that fail because they didn't guess right. Yeah. Yeah. Like this is, uh, resources that were wasted, but they get cut out of the system pretty quickly. Yeah. Unlike yeah. government services that continue to be wasteful forever and ever and ever. Yeah. Um, and you know, we just keep feeding into that as well. Like take the student loan thing that's going on now. Yeah. Right. So, um, I understand that people got themselves deep into debt and they're starting off life deep into debt and, but they, you know, they chose to do this Yeah. and maybe they should have taken more time to better understand what they were getting themselves into. Um, well that's cause that's what I was fixing to say. So I'm a, and I'm just going to assume you don't buy into the idea that, that these were predatory loans. Well, the government did it. (laughs) Well, yeah, but that doesn't make it not predatory. (laughs) Well, I mean, it's hard for those. It's hard for people to say that um, government should control banking because bankers go out and do predatory loans. And so let's hand it all over to the government. Oh, by the way, all those student loans were predatory as well. Yeah. I mean, I (laughs) like it. Yeah. Who's the who's the right person? No, I I think it's it's. It's absurd. If you believe that government is the answer to problems of predatory loan behavior in the private sector, then you can't also make the argument that student loans were predatory loans. Yeah. Well, I mean, my position would be more... So, I mean, I don't really... I don't know that I really so much even believe in predatory loans. I I don't particularly. Actually, I would say that there's a better case that government loans are predatory loans than... Well, yeah, that's kind of where I was going to head, actually, is that I think that at least in a lot of situations, like, that's the truth. (laughs) Yeah. Is that, you know, those are predatory loans, but... Yeah, because the government doesn't suffer the consequences of making bad loans. Yeah. um, Or loaning things to people that they can never pay back. Yeah. Um, Which is, like I say, and this all kind of feeds back into why college is so expensive anyway. Well, yeah, they've created part of their own problem. Yeah. Um, But... You have to think about it from another perspective because they're government loans, I think. 
um, is that you have to you have to realize actually that the 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 loan was actually given to these students by the American taxpayer. Yeah. All U.S. taxpayers are the people that loaned out the money to all these students. Yeah. All right. And so, like, even during this freeze that's been going on that Trump started. Yeah. Um, but that was because of the pandemic. Right. Right. <laughs> um, but, well, yeah, it's <laughs> right. It's because of the government reaction of the pandemic where they eliminated all your jobs. Exactly. Right. Yeah, like, yeah. Um, but, you know, just the failure to pay during the freeze on uh, payments and interest um, cost all U.S. taxpayers. Yeah, yeah, we're paying. It cost us all. The the people the the guy the plumber that went to trade school mm-hmm. and is had paid off his trade school and is out there working uh, yeah. a, a everyday job. Mm-hmm. That guy's paying for those for this. Well, yeah, I mean, we can address the fairness issue as well because you know you're, you're generally talking about um, fairly well off people like comparatively well-off people. Yeah. Like there's no there's no forgiveness of any kind of debt for working class people that never went to college. Yeah, yeah. Who I mean, generally just... make less money than the people who did go to college. Yeah. Depends on what they went Depends to college for. Depends on what for. they went to college for. Um, but that you see, that's another thing that would have been corrected by the, the free market. Yeah. If banks were giving out these loans, then they would, it would be more important to a, a, a profit-seeking enterprise to to see a return yeah to see a return and to um to more carefully weigh whether the money that they were giving was likely to be returned yeah um so you're going to school to for what anthropology yeah yeah. (laughs) i know that one it's close to home buddy but it's the truth yeah yeah (laughs) no and i i have done fine with my anthropology degree thank you very much i I know you um but uh, you know like yeah, it might have been. I didn't take any loans out for college. What? Well, and so then there's, and that that actually responds to my my next pushback that I was going to give to you mm-hmm. is that the argument from the other side would be, well, if if only the banks were giving out these loans and deciding what's going to be a return on the investment, you won't have people pursue things like anthropology and things like that. I still would have gone. Well, I know you would have, and plenty of people would. And that's <laughs> that's kind of the answer. That's mm-hmm. the retort to that, though, is that people, if somebody's truly passionate about something, they'll just go work for it and do it without the loans. Because mm-hmm. um, I got a minor in psychology. Yeah. Hey, there you go. <laughs> But yeah, that's but that's kind of the point though. Like, so people will still be pursue things that they have interest in that doesn't mm-hmm. necessarily have the monetary value. Yeah, maybe they'll do it at a community college or a small state school or something instead. Yeah. Though. Um, and uh, you know that's one of the things on the talking about fairness. Um, one of the things on this loan forgiveness program uh, is that uh, you get twice as much. Uh, student debt forgiveness if you went to school on a Pell Grant. Okay? Oh, really? So on the face, that seems to make sense because Pell Grants are need-based um, government grants. They generally don't need to be paid back, um, yeah. but they are they are finan- like true financial aid. Yeah. Supposed to be anyway. Okay. Um, so they're, they, they're supposed to go to uh, students from um, households that have low incomes that couldn't otherwise afford college. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, that was their that was their family's income. It, the the grant was given to them based on their family's income when they went to college. Yeah. In order to give them a leg up and get them out of that kind of financial issue, yeah. right? Um, it doesn't have anything to do with what kind of work they're doing now that they have completed college and are paying back their student loans. Yeah. They could be making far more money now than um than a student who didn't get a Pell Grant because his family was better off. Yeah. <laughs> but has now finished college and has a much lower paying job. Yeah. And a mountain of debt. Yeah. So the you know, if you got a Pell Grant to go to college and now you're like just under the threshold here and you're making hundred and twenty thousand dollars a year, yeah. do you need twenty thousand dollars in student loan forgiveness? You already got part of your student of your college paid for by the grant. Like yeah. you don't have to pay that back. You still took on debt. All right. Yeah, sure. Um, but you get up to $20,000 in student debt forgiveness. Whereas somebody who didn't get a Pell grant because their family was better off, um, and now has a job making $40,000 a year, they only get $10,000 in debt forgiveness. Yeah. 
right? Does that <laughs> is that fair? Like the one guy's making three times more money than the other guy. So what I'm hearing is, is the fair thing would be to just wipe everybody's out, right? That's exactly right. That's, <laughs> that's what the, I was going for. That would be the fair. Making. That that would cost us all equally. That, there you go. We can all suffer equally. Yeah, and and that's kind of the point to the other point. Like I guess the the point to drive home about this is that this is a debt that the these um, students took to the U.S. taxpayer. Yeah. And if if they don't pay them back, it, either through forgiveness or through the freeze and the you know the um, lack of interest payments during the freeze as well and so forth, um, which I saw estimates that this is that this is likely to cost the U.S. taxpayer roughly three hundred billion dollars. Good nine. Um, and, That's a lot uh, even in government money. And and yeah and well but and that's that's just it right because the government while they're not collecting this three hundred billion dollars yeah it doesn't change their spending habits no um, they continue to spend money even if they're not collecting this money and the only way they can spend money that they haven't collected is through borrowing and printing yep and that feeds and right seen, into the inflation that we have right now we've already seen what happens when you start turning on the money printer so and so. In this case, um, you know, there were a couple of things that could be done politically yeah. um, when when this faced uh, Biden. And this is all done by executive order, of course. Yep. Um, but even though the House of Representatives is supposed to hold the power of the purse, but yeah. whatever. Not the world we live in today. No. Yeah. Um, so there were some options, right? He could uh, offer some forgiveness. Uh, he could extend the freeze. Yeah. And what he did was choose the worst possible path and do both. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, so there is loan forgiveness and an extension of the freeze through December, supposedly for the last time, but we'll oh, see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, but what it does do, what it does, do, what it does is it buys votes. Yep. I was fixing to say that at the end of the day, this isn't an accident that this is when he chose leading up to the midterms here. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So I think the way to think about this is that the uh, the Biden administration has stolen money from all of us to buy votes for themselves in the upcoming election. Yep. As a bribe to voters in the upcoming election. Absolutely. But um, this is a situation where the people that benefit from it are few and noticeable, and the people that suffer from it, all the rest of us, it's like spread out over such a large population, yeah. and it doesn't happen immediately. Yeah. So um, you can focus on the, the good and forget about the unseen Yeah. <clears throat> consequences to all the, the rest of the taxpayers and to the um, U.S. economy In as general. a whole. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there we are. <laughs> yeah. Beat that horse to death. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I don't know. Where, where do we go from here? Oh, uh, one other just, I don't know, something I was thinking about with uh, with the Cheney, uh, Liz Cheney situation. Because, oh, yeah. of course, she, you know, has been giving quite a few speeches yeah. um, since she was... She's trounced. On, she's she's on her loser tour. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but it's going well for her, I guess. Yeah. Uh, she's getting good press coverage. Um, and I don't. I'm just kind of blown away by that. Generally, I, uh, the Democrats that are lionizing her now have apparently completely forgotten that she um, threw her sister under the bus for being gay yeah. to get elected in the first place. Yeah. Um, that she is the daughter of Dick Cheney. Right. This is like the, one of the worst the people in the history of American war politics. Hawk there has ever been. Yeah. yeah. And despised by so many people. Yeah. yeah. Um like pretty particularly on the left. Well yeah, but pretty univ well in his time. Well, but yeah. now the right has pretty well dumped the guy too. Yeah. So I mean for the most part. Yeah, and the so. left has forgotten all that other stuff that he did and now exactly. they they love him. Yeah. Um because he's against Trump. Yeah. Uh yeah. And, but I, I just want everybody to to appreciate the um, the paradox, I guess, of Cheney's plan to save the U.S. democracy by preventing 
a particular person from running yeah. for office. <laughs> Every time I from hear From participating in the election. I'm going to save democracy by preventing this person from participating in the election. PBS does this constantly, and it really is amazing that they can, with a straight face, say that that by not letting Trump run, that this will save democracy. Yeah. And it's just like, you, it makes no sense at all, but but they've rationalized it in their head that this is that this guy can't run, that he will ruin our country, mm-hmm. um, our democracy. <laughs> yeah. So Our democracy that isn't a democracy. Yeah. It's it's amazing that <laughs> we've ruined our republic with democracy. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> that's what's happened. Um, Incredible. So, in I don't know if it's even good news at this point, but uh, Fauci has announced that he's resigning in December. Yeah, yeah. It's about time. Yeah. Somebody <laughs> should have fired him years ago. Well, I was going to say, like, it's it's really not. I mean, it is good news as far as he won't be there anymore. Mm-hmm. But I I I mean, I'd rather see him. Like hung. you say, hung. Fire, <laughs> I was thinking firing squad. Actually. Tartan feather. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Um, but but I do think drawing that, quarters. That, there's a lot of stuff that we don't do anymore. Oh yeah, like, that that we could. Yeah. <laughs> I think are fitting at least. Mm. Um, but no, I, I, it, this one really gets me because to me, what I'm seeing here is well, this guy's going to get away with it. Like yeah. That's 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 my takeaway from this. With him stepping down before the Republicans eventually take over the House and probably Senate, um, you know, he's he'll be kind of old news by the time they're ready to to try to do something. Um, and I don't know that they would really ever do anything anyway. I mean, there's a lot of talk right now, investigations and getting to the bottom. And yeah, that's my but, opinion is that he would never be held accountable anyway. Yeah, um, I don't think he knows that though. Like, because when, when you're the one that's kind of that got the spotlight on you that way, I, I think the fear can get to you, even though we all know that nothing would ever really happen to him. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't I don't think that he's in that situation. I think that he's just trying to preserve a legacy. Yeah. Um, I, I think that he knows that he would never really be held accountable. You think so? Um, yeah, because he's Dr. Science. <laughs> Dr. Truth Science. Dr. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Um, so I, I think that he knows that yeah. he would never really truly be held accountable, but, um, to be, you know, publicly flogged, yeah. even if he wasn't really like, in, even if yeah. he didn't really suffer any consequences, um, yeah. would just be bad for his, his legacy. Drug through the mud. Yeah. Publicly. Yeah. And, um, I, I think that that's, uh, that's incredibly important to him. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. I think that he's an extremely arrogant, uh, egocentric person. Yeah. Um, and so that, that that's actually more of the, the issue that you may be right. There may be something to that. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I don't think that, I don't think that he gets left alone anyway, just because I think that there are people, Rand Paul, for example, that are really intent on bringing out all of the lies, um, that, and and all of the bad decisions that we've suffered under the, over the last few years. Yeah. Um, well, and I, I personally think that's important to, I do to, too. to see that we don't go down this road again. Yeah. Like the only way you can truly ensure that we're not going to do this again is more and better government. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, that's you nailed it. <laughs> you nailed it. No, but you've got to expose all of this stuff because mm-hmm. because there's a definitely um, there's a lot going on in the world right now, and it's really easy to not look back on the last couple of years and reflect. Yeah, and to just move forward. And and then in a few years, we can do this all over again. Well, he um, openly lied and admitted to having lied about uh, not needing masks, which turned out to be true, even though he was lying at the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, and about uh, how many people would have n- were needed for uh, herd immunity. Yeah. Um, and then he was uh, then he was promoting masks um, for a long time that don't work. Yeah. Um, and he had to know because Dr. Science would have to know that the, the virus is smaller than the, um, than the weave in these masks. Yeah. Right. Like he, he would have to know that the masks were ineffective. Yeah. Um, lockdowns, uh, that he promoted heavily, Heavily. although he claims not to now, but uh, he did. He's uh, yeah, it's out there. (laughs) Yeah. There's plenty of recordings of that. Yeah. Um, which have turned out to 
at least the studies that are coming up now are showing that that lockdowns killed more people than they saved. Yeah. Um, he promoted, well, he put down uh, any kind of um, dissent, um, including the, uh, what was it, the Barrington Declaration, that group of doctors that said, you know, that were going against um, what he was saying, opposed to lockdowns and, and all yeah. that stuff. And he, uh, there were the emails that came out where he was asking that the, they be discredited. Yeah. Um, yeah. like pushing for the discreditation of the scientists that wrote this, the doctors that wrote this. Yeah. Um, the, uh, he was um, also uh, trying his best to bury any kind of evidence that any of those early treatments were working. Yeah. Um, I mean, hydroxychloroquine with zinc and a Z-pack, all right, maybe that wasn't as effective as it first seemed like it was. Um, I think that there's actually pretty good evidence that given at the right time, ivermectin yeah. uh, can be effective. Uh, same thing with steroids. Well, and the thing about um, all of these but he, is, is they weren't hurting, even if they weren't necessarily helping, mm -hmm. they definitely, they weren't hurting you either. Right. Like there was the, no yeah, reason. These are well there was known no, drugs. Yeah. There was no reason not to at least let doctors prescribe these and, mm -hmm. and, and yeah. look at the Let's results. Let's do some studies. Let's get yeah. some people out there trying it and see what works. Um, at the same time, though, he was heavily promoting remdesivir, which did kill people. Which did kill people, exactly. Um, and he should have known that it would, just like AZT back in the AIDS days when he first started really screwing things up. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I think that the, I, like, I hope history is not kind to this man. Yeah. Um, because from where I sit, his track record is terrible. Yeah. And I can't, so I cannot from the, understand. From the beginning. Yeah. Like, going all the way back to the 80s. Yes. <laughs> Um, and I cannot understand why a person who seems to have been wrong so many times yeah. kept his job for this long. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but it, it was like a kind of a non-job in the government, I suppose, as far as most administrations are concerned. Like, yeah. who, who cares about the NIAID guy? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but he's he's certainly managed to do a lot of damage between two of the major epidemics of our uh, of his tenure. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, if not more, actually, he's pushed some other vaccines, uh, I think, for some of these other flus that that yeah. did badly as well. But I, I don't know as much about them. No. Um, and uh, I'm ha I'll be happy to see him go. Uh, I mean, I hope that he is held to account. I don't think that he yeah. will be. I'm not holding my breath. And um, and I, I hope you're wrong about, well, if he just kind of leaves and fades away, if he's not in the office anymore, they won't really pursue it. I mean, well, like I said you, to you before you the can. podcast, I mean, it, to me, it's like, um, you know, not prosecuting a murderer because he left the scene. Yeah. <laughs> well, there will definitely be voices pushing to do something. And Rand mm -hmm. Paul will be king amongst them. Yeah. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. And, you know, he's had this impact on my outlook on people that that I don't like yeah. as well. I cuz I still see people wearing masks. Yeah. Right? And like my my rationale says people can do what they not feel hurting. is best for them. Yeah. They're not hurting I mean like anybody. whatever, yeah. you know, whatever you think is best for your health then you do that. Even when I see people walking outside by themselves with masks on or people in their cars by themselves with masks on. Yeah. I mean I think that you're kind of foolish at this point. Yeah. Um, it had I, I been mean, my instinct, but you know, make the choice for yourself. But the more I think about it now, yeah. like now when I see people doing this, I cannot help but think that these people that are still wearing masks when they're by themselves or even frankly, like in the stores or wherever else. Yeah. Anywhere um, at this point. Yeah. Um, these are the same kind of people who would be throwing stones through Jewish shop windows in 1930s Germany. Yep. These are the same kind of people that would be condemning their neighbors um, to uh, the gulags in Siberia in hopes of getting Stalin's favor. Yep. I mean, that that's the kind of people that I think that they are yeah. now, is that, that they're such rule followers are so beholden to what they see as an authority yep. that they, like all capacity for rational thought is gone. Yeah, it's... I, I completely agree, and it it I just when I ever I see people like that, I just I, I it can't help but wonder, man, what's going on in their head? Yeah, like I just I, I I can't wrap my head around it. And in some ways, I feel bad for them because I do think that a part of it is that they well, have fear. been duped. 
A lot. I think a lot of it's fear. I think it's pride. Yeah. Yeah, I think that they cannot admit that they've been duped, so they yeah. they're just going to go along with this fantasy. This thing. Yeah. yeah, it's a delusion to make them not have to face the fact that they probably should have known better the whole time and had definitely been tricked. Yeah, yeah. I mean, because that's a hard thing to accept. That's like uh, it's like really overthrowing somebody's worldview in a way. Yeah. Uh, I mean, this has become so much a part of so many people. Yeah. Over this time, just like the Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> oh. Uh, and, and and with that incredible segue, <laughs> well, I don't know how to segue that into anything else. And to talk about bad people, uh, you talk about bad people, and connect it to this new pandemic. Well, Exactly. That's that's the segue. Yeah. Um, so the monkeypox thing. I, I don't even know. Like, I, I guess we should play this clip, although I'm kind of reluctant to play the clip because the, the guy's accent is so strong. Yeah. It might be difficult. I, I feel like we have to explain everything he said anyway. Yeah. Um, I would say if you want the clip, I can send you the clip. Yeah. Uh, just email me at michael at the liberty I, I'll yeah. well shoot let's just let's throw just it in there it. let's okay. just play it alright here we go Agoina right. started to investigate these patients more and found that many of them had high risk sexual behaviors multiple partners sex with prostitutes Agoina started to realize something huge that the virus had changed and for the first time it was starting to spread through sexual contact we have already proposed that sexual roots is something that we need to look really look at. Interesting. So fascinating because it's so different than what you see in the textbooks, right? Yeah, completely different. Why are they not affecting children? Right. Why not females? Why not right. the elderly? Why are we having young men, 20 to 40 years only? All right. So this is from an NPR report. Um, this is a, a Dr. Agoina. I yeah. think is what they say. He's a Nigerian doctor um, who saw the beginnings of this outbreak of monkeypox in 2017. Yeah. Well, and that's what I was going to say. This this started there like a long time. Like Five years ago. Yeah. I mean, I say a long time ago, but yeah. it's not new. So the, the important points that he makes there is that it appeared, he said, historically, monkeypox is a disease that affects uh, children. Yeah. Because um, children play around with the animals out in Nigeria, apparently. Well, I was going like to say, song. and yeah, as I remember, because I saw this report too, mm -hmm. um, it, that they pick the, generally what happens is when somebody gets monkeypox, mm -hmm. they've had contact with a monkey. Yeah. Like they've, they've been playing with monkeys and mm -hmm. they pick this disease up. Yeah. And that it doesn't really spread between people because it, it like, yeah it's not that infectious yeah or it hasn't been historically it hasn't been but it's at uh -huh. some point here it's made like a jump right um but the yeah the and that's the important part of this as well is that he says now it seems to have become a sexually transmitted disease yeah. and he says explicitly there that they weren't seeing it um affecting children yeah. uh during this outbreak yeah. Um, and that uh, instead of the normal places where they were getting lesions, um, which was like hands and face, it was around the genitals and so on. Yeah. Um, and that it wasn't affecting children so much. It wasn't affecting the elderly and it wasn't affecting women. Yeah. And that the people that these, you know, young, healthy men that were getting it um, were generally engaged in risky sexual behaviors. Yeah. All right, so those are those are the important points I think that we need to like look at this from yeah. because I think that there are questions that should be being asked right now about some of the things that we're getting reported that aren't being asked. Yeah. Um, particularly, why are children getting it? Yeah. And um, getting and, it the way they're getting it because you're well, the, the way they're getting it is the question. Yeah. Um, that's <laughs> not being asked. Yeah. Um, because the reports in this country have been that 98 percent of the people who it has infected um, are male, yeah. and I have some questions about that statistic as well. Like, yeah. I wonder. I don't. I don't know this, but you know, since the other part of this, the other statistic that I was going to bring up is 93 percent of the people reported recent sexual activity. Yeah. Uh, with another man. Yeah. All right. Um, so this is based on reports. Are they reporting their own gender? So are those 2% of people that aren't male yeah. either biologically male non-binary or biologically male 
um, trans females. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's, and in this climate, I think that's a fair question. Yeah. Um, and then, so yeah, 93% have reported recent sexual activity. Probably the other 7% had recent sexual activity that they didn't report. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, uh, so why are there like at least 12 cases, I think now of children having yeah. monkey pox? Yeah. Um, the first one that got reported, I know was the child of, uh, of a homosexual male couple. Yeah. Yeah, I'd like. <laughs> so, not a big fan of like DHR and things like that, mm -hmm. but that stuff does have a purpose. Yeah, like, I somebody mean, if, should be going to check out like, what's going on in this house. But like, we're so afraid of offending any gr any minority group that it doesn't seem like anybody's even asking these questions. No. And then, of course, you had the more recent report from France um, that the the dog got it. Yeah. Um, and that the dog had uh, monkeypox around its mouth and and anus. Yeah. Like, okay, I know that's in France, so I guess it's not really our problem, but, like... Still, though. Like, yeah, well, you, you think would think a, 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 <laughs> even a decent reporter would at least ask the question. Yeah. Like... I mean, that's a hard question to ask. <laughs> yeah, I guess it is. <laughs> Have you been screwing the dog? <laughs> <Right. laughs> I don't... <laughs> yeah, I guess that is, in retrospect. <laughs> <laughs> but... I mean, but I think that this is something that that we should concern ourselves with. It, it definitely is. Absolutely. I mean, because the statistics would suggest that there's really only one way that yeah. these children and this dog got yeah. this thing. Yeah. And the, and they don't even... Like, I mean, they keep telling you about that it can be transferred from infected towels and sheets and so forth. But as far as I know... There's no evidence there's of no that. There's no evidence of that. Yeah, no, there's no nothing I've seen to... Yeah, because... <laughs> and that... it. The reports I've seen where they mention that even, they almost in, mention it like a cautionary thing, like just mm -hmm. like we don't really know, but it could be yeah. like that type of thing to kind of to, to like throw suspicion out there if your husband gets it or something. <laughs> like, yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or if some politician gets Sharing it. Sharing you know? towels at the YMCA or something. That's yeah. The, like, right? <laughs> anyway. Um, no, I don't know. I... I don't know what else to say about that. I hate to, I like, I didn't want to bring it up particularly on the podcast because it's gross. Well, <laughs> but, but it, but it needs to, it's, this is a serious gap in our media. Yeah. I mean, I mean it's worth bringing up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, somebody should be asking these questions. Yeah. And there are, yeah, like you said, I, I hate to turn anything over to the government or leave the government up to anything, but we're, we're paying for services that are supposed to look into this kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely. And it seems like they should. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, I'm just saying. Um, and what to do from there, I, I don't even know. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Send them to the Muslims. <laughs> One-way helicopter rides? Yeah, yeah right. right. <laughs> Always been a fan of the that. The adults, not the children. Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> obviously. So. Um, yeah. I, get, I don't even want to say anything else on that topic. What? Let's yeah. move on. What else we got? <laughs> um, I don't know. What else we got over there? Uh, the only thing I have left is the Zaporizhia stuff. This, I, I guess oh, this is a right. good segue because we're talking about gaps in the media. Yeah. Um, so there, there has been a bunch of media reports uh, upset with the Russians because there's shelling at the Zaporizhia uh, nuclear plant in Ukraine um, that the Russians are occupying. And... The reason I bring this up is because the way the reports are presented, it makes it sound like, or I don't know, it, it kind of suggests that the Russians are responsible for the shelling at this nuclear plant. Well, they are responsible. They're the ones in the plant. Yes, exactly. <laughs> They're not if, they, if they left, they wouldn't be shelling the plant. Yeah, I, I guess that. <laughs> I guess that that that's exactly it, right? The, I mean, it's like nobody makes it a. Nobody it's, points out that they're not shelling their own position. Yeah, exactly. That it's the Ukrainian military that's shelling the nuclear plant that's got everybody up in arms and worried about some kind of nuclear meltdown. Yeah. Uh, the other thing, by the way, um, is that because of prevailing winds, the way the earth turns, Yeah. Uh, if, that, um, if that nuclear plant were to melt down and release radiation, it would spread across Russia. Right. <laughs> so... Yeah. Um, they have no interest in, in doing this. And I, I find it particularly odd that the Ukrainians would try and make it a point of calling out the Russians for using the nuclear power plant 
as protection for their troops or right. whatever when there was that recent report that came out that the Ukrainian army was using civilians to protect their troops. <laughs> well, um, I saw a report just today before I came over. Apparently, the Russians cut the power off to some of Ukraine just for a little while today. But mm -hmm. there's there's concerns now that what what the Russians are actually planning on doing is cutting off Ukraine from that power plant and using it just to supply areas that they control. Okay. Well, um, I mean, that's what Ukraine did to Crimea with water. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, well, I mean, it kind of makes sense. Like, I mean, if... If we're looking for like an end game here, like that may be part of where the end game comes from is, you know, the Russians take this power plant and take keep the areas they control and maybe yeah. we can get a ceasefire. Well, that the would be the nice, but the, the, Well, the problem with that, though, is, is you're serious going to apparently this um, the report I saw today that that one power plant supplies 25 percent of Ukraine. Yeah. Something like that. So you're talking about a lot of Ukraine's nuclear power is good. Apparently it is because when I heard that I was like, "That's a large percentage." Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> I, I just I didn't expect it to be that much. Mm -hmm. I on that line, um, I saw an interesting uh, report today. Actually, from I think it was from Sky News Australia. Yeah, um, it was an older report, but uh, they were talking about um, the. Um, I think they were talking specifically about the UK, but uh, all of the EU. Um, in an attempt to appease uh, climate activists. And in this report, they were talking specifically about Greta Thunberg. Oh, yes. Um, and her admonitions to them about how they're killing everybody. Uh, they shut down, you know, a bunch of nuclear plants, a bunch of coal plants, and so forth. And that has partially led to the situation now that yeah. they're in where they're worried about whether they're going to be able to keep people alive through the winter. Yeah. Because they don't have enough energy. Um and that uh, and Sky News pointed out, like, maybe it was a bad idea to let um, a 16 year old uh, radical dictate your country's energy policy. Yeah. <laughs> you know, well, but, and that's that's something with. So the the drums are being beat really hard about climate change right now. And mm -hmm. I just we're, we need to do just a whole episode one day on climate change. But yeah. something that I've that, got a really good clip for that. We, we really need to go on and put that episode together at some point because mm -hmm. the, the drums are being beat really hard. And, and my whole thing is at the end of the day, we need, I'm on the side of people yeah. surviving. Like, I mean, I, sure. I mean, gas, gas and coal and stuff. I, I, I freely admit that stuff maybe isn't the best for the environment mm -hmm. and maybe we need to try to find ways to move away from it. Yeah. But the best ways for us to move away from it is let the market, dictate that we have already mostly moved away from it i used yeah. to be that everything ran on coal and that's yeah. not common anymore um but uh, the, the problem even the switch to natural gas was a huge switch yeah uh it's more efficient it's less um uh, less damaging dangerous less polluting yeah anyway um i mean nuclear uh of course there's the occasional you, there's, um, there's issues so, with it, yeah. Yeah, but the, gotta, those have you, mostly you've been... You've got to be careful with nuclear. That's but, true. Uh, but I'm not against it, though. Yeah, but they've mostly been handled anyway. You've only had, yeah. like, three major um, issues in in history, right? Yeah. I mean, you had Chernobyl, Three Mile Island, and Fukushima. Yeah, yeah. Like, I can't think of another one. I mean, I, I can't either, but I could be wrong. I'm no expert. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I'm not saying there hasn't been some other some other heirs, but those are the only major ones that I can think of. Yeah. And, you know, two of those are really old. And yeah. the other one, they built a nuclear plant on a fault line. That just seemed like <laughs> poor planning. Yeah. Um, so. so, you know, a lot of this can be avoided anyway. And uh, well, the energy is the most important resource that we have next to maybe water. Yeah. Well, what, although that's a question now too, right? Well, yeah. Like we're going to have to address water conservation at some point. Yeah. Well, and the big but, push right now. So there's water's issue kind of in a lot of places in the world right now. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's kind we got of plenty the, of it here. No, no joke. We there's, talked about that at the front of the podcast, just right? Drain my backyard. <laughs> um, but you can have it. I don't want it. <laughs> yeah. You don't want it anymore. Um, 
So you take the mosquitoes with it, right? Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, you take the water, you don't have the mosquitoes. Hey, there you go. Um, but but water is a problem in a lot of the world right now, and mm-hmm. and there's this huge energy in the media is like it's climate change, and and we we've reached the tipping point. Like that's like if you just listen to the media, that's the consensus is we've hit the mm-hmm. tipping point, and you know there's nothing we can do. We're all gonna die. Yeah. You know. Um, but what scares me about it is like this is I thought we had till 2030. I don't think so, man. I think the clock's ticking. I thought I thought AOC told us we had till 2030. No. Wow. Um but d- the same way as what we were talking about with the people with the mask with the covid, like this p- type of propaganda is what brought those people to that point that they're still walking around the, in a mask. Yeah. in their car alone like that this type of propaganda is what brought us to that and and it's in full swing right now and this is the best way a government can use to to try to control a population uh, i'm sorry so we you know still wearing a mask walking around in a mask in their car alone and i just like imagine somebody <laughs> pacing circles in the like in their minivan or their something minivan. i don't know it just yeah. struck me as funny yeah, yeah it's it's <laughs> created a, nice, a funny image yeah. very cool well, I, good <laughs> <laughs> so but it's this it, this type of propaganda is dangerous like yeah. I, and it's it's out there in full swing right now yeah um the idea of scientific consensus is is heavily overblown and you know if you look at if you look into logical fallacies argument from authority is a big one yeah um and that's what this is and it's not to say that you shouldn't listen to people who know better oh absolutely um but uh, i guess the important thing is that the the consensus isn't really a consensus there there isn't a consensus well the consensus is bought and paid for well, that's, that's partially that's, true too. That's the problem with the with the climate change consensus. Yeah, mm-hmm. sure. There's plenty of people whose funding depends on them finding certain conclusions. Right. So guess what kind of conclusions they find? Yeah, it's the Upton Sinclair thing about um, uh, if uh, a, a man will remain ignorant as long as his paycheck is dependent on his ignorance or something yeah. like that. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, exactly how it goes, but it's something like but that. But it's something, yeah, yeah, exactly. And that's that's the road we're heading down. And at the end of the day, what's the most important thing is that that people make it and they're taken mm-hmm. care of. We can't have parts of the world where we can produce the energy and take care of these people, and mm-hmm. we don't, and they freeze to death. Yeah. And I, I think we're we may be heading towards that. Mm-hmm. And it may not be this winter, but it might be. Like where we see something like that happen, where we could have produced the energy to take care of these people and we didn't. Yeah, because we made decisions years because, ago. Because we made decisions based off of BS, Yeah, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Uh, well, to satisfy a An young agenda. Swedish girl. Well, yeah, or yeah, even worse. <laughs> so. um, and also because we are intent on antagonizing one of the biggest energy producers in the world. Yeah. Well, that's also a factor. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, just, just something to be on the lookout for. And to the winter of our discontent. The winter of our discontent. Uh, <laughs> um, Maybe not. Like I say, I hope that's not the case. Oh, we're not gonna have a problem down here. It never really gets that. Well, cold. Yeah, I was gonna say we're gonna be fine. <laughs> yeah, like if we got. Hey, if we, got, we see, we're pretty uh, if we see three days under twenty degrees, it'll be uh, practically a miracle. Yeah, so. I, yeah. We don't have to worry about freezing to death, and we don't have to worry about not having enough water. Yeah, I, I I've got enough blankets to deal with twenty degrees. Absolutely. <laughs> Um, and so. it, I'll just store this water that's in my backyard now. <laughs> right. Yeah. Mosquitoes and all, right? The, well, I'll try and strain them out. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Throw, throw a couple of, you know, a couple of iodine tablets in. Be yeah. fine. <laughs> there you go. Uh, right. and maybe my grass will grow again. <laughs> I wouldn't, I wouldn't get my hopes up. Yeah. What I need to do is plant rice in ah. my backyard. <laughs> right. I, I am perfectly set up for rice for patties. Rice patties, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, plant n- next summer. Next summer. There Spring. you go. Hey. Is that when you plant rice patties? I don't I don't know. I'll have to do some research I, between I bet, now and then. <laughs> I bet the internet knows. <laughs> yeah. I'll just ask YouTube. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> so um, YouTube has all the right answers and they know which answers to take away too. <laughs> exactly. Yes, they do. 
So, uh, yeah, that's that's all I've got. You, you yeah. have anything you want to no, add? I think I'm settled in, man. All right, so we'll have to gear up for a climate change podcast. I, I think um, it's not, just because, like, I was watching the news today, and the propaganda is just so crazy, man. Like, yeah. And, and that's th- when I was watching it today, like, that's what the, the deal with the people – with just the COVID in general, I was like, this is the same message. Mm-hmm. Like, it's just, it stokes that fear that that riles people up, man. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, I should have just talked about this while we were talking about the student loan debt things. Like, the, I read an article today where they were saying, well, okay, so we see that these potential consequences of forgiving the student loan debt. And we recognize that this is a debt to the U S taxpayer and the U S government has to supplement this some other way, which could increase inflation some more. And that the, um, all these loans that they were giving out is what drove college tuitions up so high anyway. And so that, you know, they created their own problem, but, um, you know, like, so what's the solution to this? Well, maybe we need, um, government people to go explain, uh, you know, to teach more financial responsibility to, to these people before they get their loans. Or maybe we need government. To, I was like, oh man, <laughs> you say in the word government a lot. <laughs> yeah. And then finally, the last thing was, um, or, you know, maybe we should just let it, turn it back over to private hands, uh, for people that would be, you know, take much more care in who they give loans to and make sure not to give loans more money than could be paid back and so forth. Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. That's yeah. your, that's your final option. That's yeah. like, if all else fails, this is what we'll do. Go back to the free market. Okay. Yeah. Well, yeah. all else will fail. So I guess so we'll get there. We'll get there at some point. Right. <laughs> yeah. Oh. As long as the dollar's still worth something. Yeah. Uh, and on that happy note, y- your yeah. dollar will be worth something for at least another year. I think. You think you got another year on the dollar? I think so. Yeah. I think so. So now's your chance. Buy gold. <laughs> What's the hinge of the palm? Why you, Why you give it a year? But I'm just. Are you I'm, just guessing? I'm just, yeah, You're just I'm throwing just the number. number. I thought you. Oh, I thought no, you no. had something. Okay. <laughs> I have done careful calculations. Yeah. <laughs> and I have decided to make this up. Okay. Yeah. Um, Fair enough. <laughs> at least you're honest. So, but not just gold. Buy uh, ammunition. Buy whiskey. And guns. And guns. Yeah. I, I just assume that you have guns already. Yeah, well, I do, but ammunition is I I'll always ammunition is the thing that you'd rather trade. Yeah, I think you don't want to trade your guns away. Oh, you no, want to trade your ammunition. No. You want to have spare ammunition so you can. Well, trade I'm your always ammunition. looking for a good excuse to buy. A car. I mean, like I want to drink my whiskey, but it's something that I'm willing to trade <laughs> for, you know, yeah. food. Yeah, yeah, maybe. I don't need water if I've got whiskey. <laughs> yeah, in the in your backyard, right? But yeah, you're right. <laughs> as long as the backyard <laughs> stays lower than all the yards around me, uh, I will be fine. You're, you're gonna be good. <laughs> uh, and it rains. Yeah. But you know, climate change could take that away. We, we could be a desert in I, a year. I don't know, man. I think we're on the other end of the climate change. If climate change is here, I think our climate is. is we're gonna be underwater. We're gonna be underwater. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's gonna be water world. Well, it seems to me that the bridge is the same height out of the water that it's been my entire life. Yeah. So. I uh, think you're going to be all right. I think so. I think so. But we'll explore that in a future episode. All right. Yeah, I like that. And um, yeah. So uh, until that episode, uh, you can you can follow us on Facebook. You can subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube. Uh, we have a website, thelibertymike.com. Uh, you can find all our episodes there. Um as well as articles and, you know, stuff about us. Absolutely. If you're interested. And you should be. Absolutely. Because we're cool. Sometimes. One of us is cool. All right. (laughs) We'll we'll let y'all decide who that (laughs) is. Um, And, uh, yeah, we'll, it may not be climate change next week, but we'll we'll be back next week uh, when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. (laughs)